I know what you've done. You and your co-conspirators. Gran, let's hum a little tune. Maybe that will cheer everyone up. His mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. She began to hum along, note for note. Is it our... Is it our mother? Mom? That's right, Buckaroo. They promised they could fix the foul harvest. They told us they would clean this place up. Don't listen to her. She has absolutely no proof. I am the proof. I'm Eleanor Van Horn. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. A hushed horror gripped the crowd. I wanted you all to witness my glorious return with your own eyes. Who needs a legacy when you can just live forever? Patrick C. Montesquieu, thespian extraordinaire at your service. So this Bill Kerr was a patsy the whole time? Rollo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. Is any of this real? Are you real? I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Sheesh, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. Who are you? Kamart? It's me. Rollo. Nice try, but I know you aren't Rollo. You're like, one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? <laughs> Uncle? Look, I quit messing around. It's me. If it really is you, prove it. Flaming chicken coop, Luca. Luca's jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rollo. Why does this keep happening? <laughs> Only bigger. Older, changed. How? What happened to you? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. Where did they take you? Dunno. They threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big. Look! Rollo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Look! <laughs> Pretty sweet, right? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower, but beggars can't be choosers. Rollo, it wasn't just your hands. My feet too? Dang, Pa just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rollo to his reflection in the balcony window. What the? His hands shot up to his face. Holy Toledo! Rollo, what did they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It kind of tasted like licorice. Solomon's been buying loads of licorice. I passed out and woke up like this. And then I sort of... Smashed open my cage and escaped. Whoa, you smashed open a cage? Kinda. At least I think I did. It's all a bit of a blur. They had you in a cage? Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're gonna fix it. Except, this is awesome! Well, I'm just glad you're safe now. Luca, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched. But look at it this way. I got snatched. I know where the snatched people go. We may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger? Ha! Rollo shadowboxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on! Hey fellas, what's up? Oh my god, Beck dyed her hair blue instead of grey. With a yelp, Rollo dove ah! on Luca. <laughs> take cover! Did I come at a bad time? Mm -hmm. Who the heck are you? This is Beck. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened and I need help. I didn't know where else to go. So... You're just hanging out here with your... large adult friend? Ah, uh, no. This is my buddy Rollo. This is your missing friend. One and the same. He seems a little... old. I'll have you know this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry. You're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? Your silly little treehouse? I think you mean our silly little mission control. I hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I could hear your racket from a mile away. See, Luca, this is why we need to improve security around here. Not now, Rollo. Beck, you said something bizarre happened. 
Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rollo. Anything you can say around me, you can say around Rollo. This has been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Yup. Dex's eyes narrowed. Okay. So it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try to salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. Okay. Just need to play it cool. And hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing. I was just... Come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? I just kind of felt like a change. This is gonna take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took your lesson to heart. Ilana tried to put on a smile. Before I forget, I came up here to tell you that Nellie had to go into work. Tonight? Her and Mr. Kerr decided it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seems like a grade-A creep. Beck! He is! Him and his weird cult of personality. You are not going to ruin this job for Nellie. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means enough to her to exile her daughter to this podunk town. This place sucks. The people are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains. You'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. You know, I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nellie come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival. But not another peep. She sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. I know moving is hard, honey, but that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. If you decide to rebel by dyeing your hair she more... She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off for you. Think of how rebellious you'll look then. Very funny. Thank you. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Mom. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, this town does not suck. <laughs> Second, you need help because you got grounded? No. I'm sorry you got in trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of like this look. Great. Can we get back to the story now? This next part is the important bit. I have this radio I upgraded with my mom, and I was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial in something worth listening to. Mr. Kerr, are you there? Mr. Kerr? Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies, I have the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately. One moment. Hello, sir. It's so nice to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our new lead researcher of deep engineering? Nellie Modewheel seems to be integrating nicely. At this very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I even had the chance to suggest it. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor? Her work must be complete before the festival. Wait, we've only got a day? That's not... I feel like they've not planned this very well. <laughs> I'll make sure she stays day and night until it's accomplished. Good. You know how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she's finished the work, we need to make a determination regarding her long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir? I usually have more time to fully bring people into the fold. We're in the end game, Bill. After your failures with Dr. Prescott, I can't afford to take any risks. Of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. Once she finishes the work, she will either leave, either leave the office completely committed to perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. Sir, if I might suggest, maybe we should delay, just for a bit. Oh? 
It's just, we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline. And rushing into things has caused some issues in the past. I see. Please understand that I just want what's best for you. I'm eternally grateful for all that you've done for me. Bill, I'll make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run smoothly, not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You're only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Yeah. Just so we're clear, when they say loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like actually killing someone? Capital murder? Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who is this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. As far as we know, Care is the top banana perennial harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana on the field. What the hell is my mom caught up in? Has she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think that body at the warehouse was... the person Beck's mom came to replace? That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nelly's predecessor got... um... loose-ended. I'm getting that impression. Okay, so we need to get your mom out of there before the festival happens. That's two- oh, that's two days. That's two days away. Won't she just come home after work? The creep on the radio said they were going to hold her there until then. So if she's not coming out, we got to go in and get her. Flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. Maybe this will help. You have blueprints? Well, it's really just a welcome map from my mom's PH orientation day. But it shows the layout. Sure looks like blueprints to me. Look, here's the reception area. There's a big room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exits marked. Guys, guys, guys. We have a deadline. We have an objective. We have blueprints. You realize what this is, right? Rolo started to wiggle with excitement. I think we're heisting. This is officially a heist. Chapter I love that he's six. all he's all big and grown up, but he's still got the excited wigglies of, of being a little kiddo. They spent the night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. Yes, it would be finally. No small feat, a modern facility equipped with all manner of technology, not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. Yeah. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. Hell yeah the final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread, even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Iggy's gonna have a special job. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Nice. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. All right, quick recap. Rollo, you're gonna talk to Roxy. Cordially. Without her and Fitz, this whole thing could go bust. Me? Cordial is my middle name. Uh-huh. And how do you plan to explain your new- he waved vaguely at Rollo's sizable figure. Circumstance. Bah, she'll be so happy I'm alive, she won't even notice. Beck snorted an involuntary giggle. And Beck, you're sure Alona won't just shoot this whole thing down when she hears it? She'll listen. Once she understands the danger Nelly is in, the danger we're all in, the plan will make sense. Okay. That leaves me with Jeff, then Iggy. How are you going to persuade them? I'll think of something. They each looked at each other with sleepy confidence and nodded. Well, Godspeed! I think Jeff's gonna be easier to convince than Iggy and Tish. Although I'm not that worried about convincing Iggy. Right, we gotta find... We gotta find... We gotta find Jeff. Look for trash. Where there is trash, there should be Jeff. Oh. 
Good morning, sir. Hey, Miss Hatch. Undaunted, he shook his head. Over? No. Endings are merely a state of mind. This doesn't end until I give up. Wow. I admire the conviction, but can he really pull through? I don't know. Jeff, my man. Hey, Jeff. What can I do you for? Well, I know how much you hate perennial harvest. Hate's a strong word. Oh, sorry, I mean, I didn't say it was the wrong word. Gotcha. So, we're gonna break into the headquarters, and I thought you might be able to help. Jeff wheezed out a long snicker. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I knew you kids were all right. Great, so you'll help? The joy in Jeff's face drained instantly. Not a chance. But, give me one good reason I should risk my hide aiding and abetting you rascals. Looking into the sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. Um, junk makes sense, but I want to say shit. Shit. Yeah, it's all shit. I still ain't helping. Ain't that some shit. <laughs> Luca wasn't ready to give up so easily. He shouted out again. Hide. Jeff's brow perked up. What'd you say? Go ahead and hide Sensing then. Traction, Luca carried on with vigor. Let a bunch of kids do what needs to be done. We're not afraid. Jeff's scowl faded with a sigh. Say what you will about old Jeff, and they all do. But you'll never hear him say I hid from One nothing. One good stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. What was it you kids needed? Some sort of disguise. I got just the thing. And while we're at it, that crate should come in handy. This ain't gonna be free, you know. I'm thinking five bags of sour golf should cover it. Put it on my Luca tab? offered out his open hand to seal the deal. With a firm and dusty grip, Jeff reciprocated. Done. Swing by first thing in the morning. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Now we need Iggy's help. She's gonna be slightly more complicated, right? Oh, here he is. Hey, buddy. Hey, Tish. Look who it is. Luca, you here to try to tickle us to death again? Look, just... Hear me out. Iggy raised an eyebrow suspiciously. We're listening. Iggy, I know we've both been giant bags of... Shit. To each other. Iggy gave a reluctant shrug. <laughs> You're not wrong. But lately, life has been kind of... Crooked. You know? Crooked? Yeah, well, life's always crooked. Get over it. We ain't interested. Crap. Luca knew they'd need Iggy and Tish. He tried again. Iggy, I know we've both been giant bags of shit. I'm sticking with shit. Iggy shit to each other. Shrug. You're not wrong. But lately, life has been kind of strange, you know? Considered the point. Things have been weird around here. So I'm offering a truce and asking for your help. What do you say we... Pull our hostilities? We don't pull away from nothing. Buzz off. I didn't know what the next lo line was gonna be. Come on. We've been giant bags of shit to each other. Life has been kind of strange. I'm offering a truce and asking for your help. What do you say we... I thought it was gonna be like, pull off a scheme or something. Break our hostilities. At least for now. We do like breaking things. Even if a truce means less breaking things. What if I told you there was a way to have a truce and break stuff? Go on. I need you to cause a distraction so I can sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ. A wild-eyed grin spread across Iggy's face. My, my, Luca Van Horn. I'm impressed. After all this is done, maybe you and Tish can come hang out at the treehouse sometime. Iggy glanced over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. Fine. But not because we want to see a crappy treehouse. We just like to cause chaos. With a quick nod, Luca was off. Thanks, lads. Fabulous. Did you hear that, Tish? Iggy gazed up at Tish with a smile. You invited us to hang out at the treehouse. A tree tear ran down Tish's cheek. Aww. I never expected this day to come. How wonderful. Tish! Chapter 7. Aww. Into the hive. 
A good heist requires preparation, and thorough preparation takes time. Something they had precious little of. Yeah. So far, everything was in order. Jeff, Iggy, and Tish all agreed to do their part. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. Yes. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. Yes. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. Rolo, Probably good thinking. uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect, but a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90% confidence. Hell yeah. Rolo took a few vigorous breaths and shook out his arms. Just stay calm, Rolo. You can do this. Oh my god, are we in the box? We're in the crate, aren't we? Got your delivery here. A delivery? Hmm, I don't have anything in my notes about a delivery. One moment. I'm so sorry, but there's no delivery scheduled for this morning. Right. to think quick. That's because this goes directly to the founder. He asked that it be kept secret. Rollo sighed, adjusting his tool belt. You know how the founder can be. I suppose we can leave this one off the records. Our harvest awaits and such. With a stroke of his mustache, Rollo proceeded into the perennial harvest headquarters. Our harvest awaits. Package here for the founder. Oh, I didn't hear anything about. Yeah, this is a need to know kind of thing. Um, I'll he just check. And flip through the pages of his clipboard. This goes directly to the founder. I don't have time to fill you in. Oh, I see. If you could just complete this form. With urgency in his voice. Every time with the forms. Look, if you want to explain to the founder why I'm late. Well, it's your funeral. I'm sorry. What did you say your name was again? Rolo I'm panicked. Our harvest awaits, sir. That's a restricted area. Excuse me, sir. Our harvest awaits. <laughs> ready, ready to light this candle, Tish? Yep. Suck on this perennial ham fist. What was that? The distraction was enough for Rollo to regain his confidence. Just open the damn door. I got a job. The clipboard fumbled around in a frenzy. I. I should check on that noise. Oh, come on! Just buzz me in already! Okay, okay. Ha! <laughs> Phew. That was close. Our harvest awaits. Mm -hmm. Hey, I figure, when in doubt, stick with the classics. Well, that was a close one, but you pulled it off. Nice work, Rollo. Alright, everyone knows what to do? Yep, deep engineering is to the north. I'll go with Beck, in case she needs some muscle. I'll head east to the founder's office. You two be safe. We're splitting up, I don't want to split up. What if something happens? That's all. There's not even any cups for the water. Um... Am I meant to know where I'm going? I'm gonna follow the map. Oh! Solomon? Solomon stopped in his tracks. Luca. What are you doing here? It's a long story. Are you okay? A veneer of confusion flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically. No, I'm most certainly not okay. Someone, some strange people grabbed me and... Were they in hazmat suits? Yes, how did you know? They brought me here and locked me up. And when they were distracted, I ran. Dang, okay, you should stick with me. We've got a plan. facade briefly faltered. We... Yeah, Rollo and Beck are headed to deep engineering. I'll just tell them the whole plan, Luca. Jesus. Thank heavens you found me. We've got to get out of here. We can't leave just yet. But they'll catch us again. i got to do something first. When you were running, did you happen to see a door marked Founder? 
Founder? Why are you looking for him? I'm not. I just need to get into that office. Now that you mention it, I do think I saw a door that said Founder. It was just down this way. Luca happened to notice a plaque above the door. Office of the Founder. Knocking comes with consequence. Oh, here it is. So it is. It's pretty lucky that I ran into you, or else I might have missed it. Truly fortunate. Locked. Solomon leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Regrettably, it seems to be some sort of electric lock. I don't see how you, how we could possibly defeat a lock like Luca that. Smiled and looked at his watch. Let's just wait a minute. Ha! <laughs> if in doubt, hit it with a shovel. I don't know what sort of funny business you're up to, but I like she it. Mind a quick hat tip and ambled off with a whistle. Howdy. Good afternoon. The light on the keypad changed from red to green. How did you do that? It's good to have friends. Quick, let's get inside before someone spots us. Oh. Luca, you sweet fool. Luca you fool. On his walkie-talkie. Rollo, I'm in. As expected, there's a control panel. Great timing. We're stuck at a locked door mark 24601. Need you to get us through. What if someone catches us? We should get out of here. I'm not leaving my friends, Solomon. On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. Surely you don't have a way to get around the password. Hmm. Luca pecked out his best guess. Underground secrets. The screen blinked to life. <laughs> they shouldn't Call use the, the same. You should never use the same parcel. How, how did you just guess that? Oh, it's this absurd password Rollo heard when he was down here before. It's funny how someone arrogant enough to call themselves the founder uses such a basic password. Or they were thinking several moves ahead, not expecting anyone to guess something so simple. These villain types always end up outsmarting themselves. Jaw clenched into a half smile. Your powers of deduction are as impressive as your luck. Luca quickly scanned the columns for number 24601. Rollo, I think this should do it. Bingo bango, doors open. Luca, you never fail to impress. What is that slippery lout even doing down here? We have a friend whose mom is in trouble. We're here to get her out. I see. Okay, Luca, I think we're close. The next door is marked 13806. Once again, Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In that moment of distraction, Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. Maybe this one opens the lock. Crap, we got company. Luca, must go faster. One sec, I can't think he with all this noise. The screen with his finger. Here it is, 13806. Go, go, go! Curse these fumbling hands. My apologies, Luca. Don't beat yourself up. I know you were just trying to help. <laughs> were those... Do they have guns? Aw, oh, man. No water cups. Rollo. There's clearly something going on with that. Oh, no, they're just holding the clipboards. Rollo, are you okay? Rollo, come in. Approached with a sneer and spoke into his walkie-talkie. You can turn off the alarms. They're trapped. With satisfaction, he called into the hallway. That, my dears, is a dead end. Nowhere to run. Rollo, where are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I think we lost him. Making our way back to Nelly's office. Okay, you two rabble-rousers are coming with us. Nope! Ha! Make a break for it! Did that little shit just kick me? <laughs> Don't just stand there, after them. What a beautiful... It all comes full circle for Roxy. <laughs> okay, I think that worked. 
Roxy and Fitz have, a, have him on a wild goose chase. I'm having trouble following what just happened. Like I said, it's good to have friends. Rollo, how long do you think Roxy can distract them? How long can Roxy keep someone so pissed off they can't see straight? Let's just say we got time. Entering Nelly's office now. Mom! Oh, honey, what did you do to your hair? Thought you'd be happy. I finally used the young chemist's lab kit. You sure have a knack for making me incredibly proud in the most frustrating ways. We need to get you out of here. We? Who is your adult friend? Oh, I'm not an adult adult. Ever heard of a growth spurt? I had more of a growth spew. No, that's not Nelly possible. over to examine his teeth. Substantial banding on the enamel of the molars, consistent with tempus liquamine exposure. Is that what you call the gunk they forced me to drink? You drank it? Oh, oh no. They told me it was only being tested on plants. Oh, Beck, sweetie, I promise I didn't know. And well, what the hell is going on at this place? I was brought here to work on the discovery of a lifetime. A novel chemical compound we discovered was discovered under Beacon Pines, in a wellspring they called the Source. They named it Tempus Liquamine. It pulls energy from its surroundings in order to fundamentally alter matter's relationship to time. It was the secret to Valentine's fertilizer. They harvested the source, infusing small amounts of Tempus Liquamine into the product. It worked wonders, drastically accelerating plant growth. Crops would be ready to harvest in a fraction of the time. But it led to complications. The foul harvest! Perennial harvest came in to clean up the mess. To succeed where Valentine failed. But Tempus Liquamine is... rebellious. Rebellious? You can think of it as a manifestation of change itself. It's volatile by its very nature. So the more you try to force it to do a specific thing... The more it resists, yes. I can relate to that. My role was to finish the work of my predecessor, Dr. Prescott, harnessing Tempus Liquamine to reliably manipulate an organism's age. Just imagine how many people we could feed. Mr. Kerr was very insistent that we achieve a successful result before today's festival. But you didn't, Nelly right? Sighed. You know how much I love a good puzzle. I poured myself into the problem. It wasn't long until I discovered oddities in Dr. Prescott's notes. Oddities. They contained obvious errors, mistakes that someone of his reputation would never make. So I fixed them and... Now I get to replace my entire wardrobe. I really am truly sorry. Meh, those clothes were all hand-me-downs anyway. It sounds like Dr. Prescott figured it out, got cold feet, and intentionally sabotaged his own work. I had considered that possibility. I've sent a letter asking him to clarify his thinking. Mom, Dr. Prescott is dead. Care had him killed. What? I overheard them talking about it on the radio. It's why we gotta get you out of here. I just... Like, now. Wait, the vial. I finally solved the chemical equation, allowing direct control of aging. Mr. Kerr picked it up just before you came. All the more reason we gotta hightail it. Luca, we got Dr. Modwell, heading your way now. Roger that, be careful. Alright, everything's on track. And what is your plan for escape? We'll go over everything when they get here. In the meantime, maybe we can dig up some more info. 